I have the busiest life of anyone I know, and I love it. Dog walking, school clubs, field hockey, part-time job at the diner, babysitting, I did it all. Hi everyone, I'm Olivia from Massachusetts. Please like and subscribe. Not everyone understood why I liked to stay so busy, but Mabel was the only person who was a jerk about it. A nice dress, is it your grandma's? It's for ballroom dancing class. Like you have any rhythm. That's what the class is for, genius. And why do you care so much about what I'm doing? I don't care. I just think it's sad. You fill up all your time with pointless activities so you don't have to think about how lonely and pathetic your life is. Bully was too kind of a word for Mabel. She was evil. She hadn't always been this way. We used to be best friends. In fact, we were inseparable. Sleepovers, late night phone calls about the boys we were crushing on, we were even lab partners in chemistry class. All of that changed the day of the triathlon. We made it through the swimming and the cycling segments of the race with no problems. We were neck and neck. And then during the running segment, Mabel tripped over a rock and fell hard. I think I've broken my ankle. Should I find a medic? Or maybe I can help you up so we can both finish? I felt guilty. But as the other runners raced past, all I could think about was beating them. Mabel had been so excited for us to do this together, though. No, you go ahead. I'm sure help will be here soon. I hesitated, but only for a second. OK, I'll see you after the finish line. I sped off, leaving Mabel behind. Things were never the same after that. I tried connecting with Mabel over and over, but she wanted nothing to do with me. And then our paths just kind of went in opposite directions. I was still super competitive and always involved in sports and other physical activities, but Mabel became more introspective and artsy. She joined the theater club and even DJed on weekends. Sometimes I still miss her, but then she'd shove me into a locker or make fun of me behind my back, and I'd remember that she's a bully and a jerk. I'm better off without her. As my partner Pierre twirled me across the dance floor at class that night, I felt everything else fade away. All my cares and worries, even my other hobbies. It was nice to let go. But after class, Mabel's words were ringing in my head. I stopped to talk to Pierre. We didn't go to the same school, but we were the same age, and he knew me better than almost anyone. You don't think she was right, do you? She has a point. You move non-stop, like a shark. Almost like you're afraid if you stop swimming, you'll drown. A shark couldn't pull off these moves. Come on, be serious for a second. What are you trying to escape from? Right now? This conversation. I stomped off. Whatever you say, shark girl. What was everyone's problem today? I expected that treatment from Mabel, but I had to admit it hurt to hear Pierre agree with her. The next day, <laughs> Mabel was laughing in the hall and her stupid friends kept glancing over at me. Finally, I had enough and marched right up to them. What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. I signed you up for the triathlon, that's all. What? You can't just sign another person up without their consent. Fine, don't do it then. You're obviously too scared. I was smart enough to know she was manipulating me, but my competitive side was drowning everything else out. Scared? I wasn't scared of anything. I don't mind, I'll do it. Besides, I'm not the one who couldn't finish. That wiped the smirk right off Mabel's face. I felt satisfied as I strode off down the hall. But then my guilt came rushing back. <laughs> Whatever, why should I feel guilty? She is the one who put me in this position. I threw myself into training. If I was going to do this, I was going to win. I swam laps in the pool, biked up a mountain to build endurance, and ran everywhere instead of taking the bus. One morning, when I came up for air in the pool, I was surprised to see another person swimming laps. Usually this early, I was the only one here. Wow, she was fast. She pushed herself up on the other side and removed her goggles. It was Mabel. I didn't know what to make of her being there. But then when I went to relax my muscles in the hot tub afterwards and Mabel was there too, I started to get annoyed. 
Are you following me? This is a public facility. I've never seen you here before. Is torturing me at school not enough for you? Now I can't even train without you hassling me? I'm here to train too. Not everything is some conspiracy against you. Train for what? What do you think? The triathlon. You're doing the triathlon? Why? So I can finish what I started. I had to admit I respected her for that. Maybe we could train together. I don't need your help. She got up and left. Ugh, I don't know why I even offered. She could have at least been polite, but I guess that was too much to ask from Mabel. Well, at least I had the hot tub to myself now. At ballroom class later that night, I was dancing furiously. Usually, I was able to let everything else slip away, but this time I couldn't focus. Hey, this isn't your triathlon. Slow down. It's supposed to be fun. I'm sorry, Pierre. I know I'm not being a very good partner. Are you kidding? You're great. Everyone else here needs a cane. What's on your mind? It's Mabel. She signed up for the same triathlon I'm doing. She has the right to, doesn't she? I'm not saying she can't. I just don't know why now, after all this time. I remember when you guys used to be attached at the hip. I know you still miss her sometimes, even if you won't admit it. Actually, you don't know that, because I don't miss her. I stomped off again. Watch out, shark girl coming through. All throughout training leading up to the triathlon, Mabel was like my shadow. Everywhere I looked, she was doing the same thing. If I was on the treadmill, she increased her speed. If I was in the pool, she swam just a little bit faster. It didn't intimidate me, because being fast in controlled conditions was very easy compared to the triathlon, which took place outdoors, and that was where I dominated. We didn't speak again after that conversation in the hot tub, but we were never far from one another. It made me notice how careless Mabel was with her safety. So when she wasn't looking, I tried to help. All the training had me exhausted. My mom must have noticed because she brought some cookies and tea to me in bed one night. I know you don't like quitting, honey, but there's no shame in walking away from something that's no longer making you happy. You don't have anything to prove to anyone. Mom, I can't just walk away. Mabel would never let me live it down. Mabel is your friend. She's not going to judge you for taking care of yourself. She's not my friend. She's my nemesis. We haven't been friends in a long time. Ugh, I know, sweetie. I guess I just always hoped you two would find your way back into each other's lives. Now eat your cookies before your dad steals them. I didn't have the heart to tell my mom that that was never going to happen. Plus, my mouth was full of chocolate chips. That night, I dreamed I was going for a jog, when suddenly the whole world turned into a treadmill. I wanted to get off, but I knew if I stopped running, I'd fall into space and float away. And there was Mabel with her arms crossed, laughing at me. When I woke up, I was jogging in place in my pajamas. The next day, Mabel and I were biking down a gravel road. <laughs> Not together, but at the same time. Suddenly, Mabel hit a rough patch and flipped over her handlebars. Ooh, ouch. That looked painful. Are you okay? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. It's not like you ever have before. How long are you going to hold on to that grudge? You're the one who told me to keep going and finish the race. Or do you not remember that part? Oh, forget it. Just leave me alone. I told you I didn't need your help. Mabel, this is so stupid. You're gonna get yourself hurt again. Why not just bail? You're not special, Olivia. I can do whatever you can do. I'm not saying I'm special, you psycho. I'm trying to look out for you. A car pulled up right in front of us. Hey, you two, maybe you could move your little powwow onto the sidewalk instead of the middle of the road. Go Shut around. Up. The day before the triathlon, Pierre and I skipped ballroom class so I could let my body rest. We hung out on the steps of the museum, which overlooked the entire city. Can I ask you something? You're just going to leave if you don't like the answer. I won't this time, promise. Do you really think Mabel is right? It's not about right or wrong. I think Mabel was hurt when you left her behind. And she hurt you when she refused to accept your apologies or hang out again. Now it's become this vicious, never-ending cycle. In some ways, it's like you two never left that triathlon. <laughs> you had me for a second there. 
No, honestly, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for always telling me the truth, Pierre. Anytime, shark girl. How are you? I feel like we always talk about my problems. Well, things haven't been easy lately, to be honest. My parents argue constantly, and I've been struggling at school. The ballroom lessons are kind of an escape for me. Pierre, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Dancing is the one thing that helps you feel better, and I've been ruining it by complaining about my stupid problems. You're the reason it's an escape. You could never ruin it. I felt my stomach flutter <laughs> with the golden light on Pierre's hair. Just the two of us on the steps. It was the first time in forever I felt comfortable just sitting still. I lay my head against his shoulder, and we watched the sun sink behind the skyscrapers. <laughs> but enough of that sappy stuff. I had a race to win. At the starting line on the shore of the lake, I glanced over at Mabel. She stared straight ahead into the water, nervous but determined. The whistle blew, and we were off. Okay, Olivia, time to live up to your nickname. Go, shark girl, go! I swam like I was born in the water, like I was a goddess of the sea. When I reached the shore, I hopped onto my bike without missing a beat. I glanced back. I was winning. All my training was paying off. But the race wasn't over yet. I noticed another rider coming up fast behind me. It was Mabel. Wow, I guess I underestimated her. I started to pedal even faster. As impressive as Mabel was, she was going to have to settle for second place. I could see the other riders huffing and puffing in the distance behind us. I threw my bike to the side and hit the ground running. It was the final segment of the race, the 10K. Mabel was close behind me. She looked exhausted. I was getting tired too, but I was in great shape from sports and constant exercise. Sorry, Mabel, but you're a DJ, not an athlete. What? While I'd been patting myself on the back, Mabel had caught up to me, and now she was pulling ahead. No, I couldn't let this happen. Not with first place so close. It was time to show Mabel just how fast I was. I took a breath, hurtled forward like a freight train, and then I tripped. I fell on my face in the dirt and hit my shoulder on a rock. Ow, ow, ow. Well, so much for winning. I started to cry. Then a hand appeared in front of me to help me up. Why are you stopping? Mabel, you can win this. Go, you earned it. I know you were looking out for me during our training. I told you not to help me, but I'm glad you did. I was speechless. Come on, this time both of us finish or neither of us do. I couldn't believe that after leaving her behind all that time ago and how messed up things had become between us ever since, Mabel was willing to lose the race just to help me. She supported me, and we hobbled onward together. The other runners started to pass us. At the finish line, Mabel and I practically collapsed. We chugged water and caught our breath. We may not have won, but we finished, and we did it together. Mabel, I'm so sorry. I never should have put the race before our friendship. I'm sorry for all the time we lost because of my stupid, selfish, competitive streak. If I could go back, I'd do it differently. I'm sorry, too, for bullying you and for being stubborn and taking so long to forgive you. Does... does that mean you forgive me now? Mabel didn't answer. She just wrapped her arms around me in a bear hug. From that moment on, Mabel and I were best friends again. I went to all her DJ gigs, and she was always there to support me at my races, from the sidelines. We had our different interests, and that's okay. What mattered is that we were there for each other through the ups and downs. At the next ballroom lesson, Pierre was waiting for me. How's it going, shark girl? Before he could finish his question, I kissed him. He was speechless, but I could tell how happy he was when we were dancing. He had the same dreamy smile on his face that I had. I felt lucky to have these special people in my life, and I was never going to take them for granted again.